In this lecture, I will talk to you about Rolt's law for non-ideal fluids. Let's remember what a non-ideal fluid is. A non-ideal fluid is a fluid in which the volume of molecules is not neglected and intermolecular forces connecting the molecules exist. And these forces will play a role in decreasing the vapor pressure of the fluid. And we'll see that in a second. Now before we talk about that, let's talk about the heat of solution. Now we already spoke about heat of solution in another video, so let's briefly discuss it. So the heat of solution is the sum of energy required to break the intermolecular forces of compound 1 plus the sum of the energies required to break the intermolecular forces of compound 2 plus the energy released when you form the new uh, solution and that gives you the enthalpy of solution or heat of solution. Now when this guy is negative, when he's exothermic, the bonds formed are stronger than the bonds broken. So they're more stable. Now when it's endothermic, when it's positive, the bonds formed are weaker and less stable than the bonds that were broken. Now let's compare ideal and non-ideal situations. Now when we talk about ideal situations, we can graph Rolt's law. And the y-axis is vapor pressure, and the x-axis is mole fraction. Now we have two compounds here, compound A and compound B. Now for compound A, when, when uh, we go from here to here along the x-axis, the mole fraction increases. For compound B, we, when we go from here to here for, on the x-axis, the mole fraction decreases. The brown line represents the pressure, it's the slope. For, for compound A. And the green line represents the pressure of the slope for compound B. Now as we go, as we increase the mole concentration in compound 1 or compound A, the pressure of it increases. And as we go this way, the mole fraction of this guy, compound B, decreases. So as we go this way, the vapor pressure of uh, compound B decreases. Now at any given time, we could find the final vapor pressure and we find the final vapor pressure by summing the two pressures. So for example, say at this point, the total pressure is this guy plus this guy gives you this plus this, so it's somewhere over here. And that's what the red line is. Now this is for an ideal fluid. Now in an ideal fluid, the surface molecules are not connected by any intermolecular forces. Because remember, in, a not, in an ideal fluid, we're neglecting those intermolecular forces. So nothing holds the molecules together. So they, so they could freely escape into the environment if they have the kinetic energy. However, in a non-ideal fluid, there are intermolecular forces. And these forces hold the molecules together. They inhibit the molecules from escaping into the environment. So at any given time, less molecules will be able to escape in a non-ideal fluid than in an ideal fluid. And because there are less molecules present in the uh, space above, the pressure will be less. And therefore, the stronger the intermolecular forces, the less likely that they will evaporate. Likewise, the weaker the intermolecular forces holding the molecules together, the more likely that they will evaporate. Now let's look at some graphs for non-ideal fluids. Now in this graph we're going to compare two situations. We're going to compare positive or endothermic heat of solution and negative or exothermic heat of solution. We're also going to compare non-ideal situations represented by dashed lines and ideal situations represented by solid lines. Now in this graph the y-axis is vapor pressure and the x-axis is the mole fraction. We're dealing with two compounds, compound A, compound B. Compound B is the green line, compound A is the brown line. Now, um, in an endothermic reaction, the bonds formed are weaker than the bonds broken. And that means the bonds formed are going to be less likely to hold the molecules on the surface. That means more molecules will evaporate. And if, if more molecules evaporate, more molecules will be present in the space above, more gas molecules. And if more gas molecules are present in the space above, the vapor pressure is higher. Therefore, compared to ideal situations, 
for each case. In a non-ideal situation that's endothermic, the pressure for each will be higher, and that's why they curve upward. Now, in an exothermic, the opposite holds. In an exothermic reactions, the bonds formed are stronger than the bonds broken. Therefore, the final solution will, will hold its molecules very tightly and will not let them go. They will not be able to escape. It will be less likely to go into the gas state. And that's why less gas molecules will be present in the space above, and the vapor pressure will be lower. And that's why, in each situation, they're curved downward. So if you look at the pressure at any given point, it's going to be lower than the ideal pressure.